This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. The TalkSport Fan Network is proudly supported by McDelivery, bringing you the food you love. McDelivery brings a top-tier lineup of food right to your door. No matter the results, you'll always be winning with McDelivery. Order now on the McDonald's app and you'll get rewards points delivered too. So that ordering today means some tasty rewards for tomorrow. Only via app at participating restaurants. 18 plus rewards registration required. Points only on menu items, delivery fee and terms apply. See mcdonalds.com. Hello everyone, it's Monday night and welcome to the Tilton Talk Show. I'm Paul Hickies and we're joined by Mark Adams. Good evening everybody. Chris Brown. Good evening. Craig Courtney. Good evening everyone. Alan Watson. Good evening. And last but by no means least, our special guest for tonight, I'm absolutely delighted to say, is the one and only Stephen Gleeson. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so we have no uh, we have no Claire Giblin or Mark Meredith tonight. They're both off on their jollies doing uh, doing what they're doing, and uh, no blues to talk about this week either. Obviously, no game the weekend, but plenty to talk about still. There's never a dull moment, is there? So, no. yeah. in the last week, we've seen the return of Gary Rabbit, and um, obviously Stephen. I'll start with you first, and just tell us what it's like to play for Gary as a manager, and 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 what it what it what it takes for him to come in and stabilise us obviously in eight games and try and see us safe so we don't need to worry on that last game against Norwich uh, like we spoke before obviously went there. I think it's it was a no-brainer kind of bringing Gary back in uh, we'll probably touch on it later but still think it's one of the craziest decisions I've ever seen in football when, when he got let go so yeah. uh, playing for Gary is pretty straightforward uh, not a lot of grey areas he knows what he wants from his team he'll have them set up really well hard to be and I think he'll come in and defensively, he'll get the team uh, very structured, so then uh, hard to break down and that. So, like say, when he came into us, it was a tough situation at the start, and he's kind of coming into something similar. So, I think first and foremost, he'd be looking for making the team really hard to beat, and then go from there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Craig, the women had a good two 0 win yesterday, I believe. They did indeed. Yes, uh, another step towards the continued push. Uh, for the Women's Super League. It's uh, three games to go now. Um, so a couple away from home. One of those is a, a, a game in hand against the team that are is second in the league at the moment in Crystal Palace. Yeah, and we actually have Charlton who are just below us to play uh, this upcoming weekend. So some some tough games, but still opportunities. And, and it could, you know, if, if results go away, it could mean that the last game uh, that we play up at Durham um, he's, he's actually going to be uh, the, the decider. So, uh, and I've just realised not three games to go. It's actually four. So um, with the with the game in hand, but no, it was good to uh, good to get together again yesterday. Um, some great great football played. And actually, um, you know, shout out to the people that uh, that came down. It was uh, just shy or just over actually of eleven hundred again there yesterday. So an increase on the previous week in terms of attendees. Uh, through the show, we were able to help out two families, so it was great to to get them down there so that they could enjoy the game. And just beforehand, held um, the the next meeting around Blues matters as well for the ladies' game. So a lot of things are in the pipeline, and uh, we continue to work with the club to see how things can progress over the next few weeks. But um, keep your eyes out. That last game at home uh, is against Sheffield United. It could be key and, you know, uh, more details to follow, but we want to get as many people as possible down there supporting the women and hopefully, hopefully putting us in that great position to go to that last game where we can uh, we can push for that title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me, obviously, um, the most important thing is obviously that Tony Mowbray has nothing too serious and we can get him back in the summer. We do see him back at St Andrews in the summer because... Ultimately, he's, he's still the manager of our club, isn't he? And I, I could still see him as the man to take us forward as well. But I don't think we could have possibly got a better person to come in, especially with Robbo with him as well. Alan, what do you think? What did what did you think when you found out that Gary Rowe was coming back? Uh, very, 
Very, very, very pleased. Uh, I, I, I think I think the situation over the last weekend when we we lost and Mark Mark was looking very worn out and 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 you know uh, dishevelled. Uh, I, I I I would have questioned the idea perhaps a fortnight before of bringing somebody new in uh, because I was under the impression that Tony would only be gone. For, for a short while and we'd be back in time. But when, once it became apparent that that wasn't going to happen, it was impeccable, that, in, in absolutely essential that we we brought somebody in. And, and as you say, um, nobody, nobody better, you know, we, we all go on about uh, John Eustace being elbowed out at a strange time. Well, his was even, even stranger than that because... Yeah. He, he he was uh, John was always learning learning the ropes and and and, and doing well, uh, but Gary Gary was you know the real the real deal and I I, re, I remember <laughs> I remember getting a, a text from my mate Don who used to sit next to me uh, at the golf club um, during a lunch and I I, I I people were saying what's the matter Alan? you know you 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 look you look uh, ashen face. I couldn't believe. It. I thought Dan's pulling my leg here. You know, you, Gary, Gary, how it sacked. You know, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, he, he, he was just again. You know, the, the, his style of play and, and and everything was was personally. It's one I liked. I don't want to go. Everybody talks about you know playing attacking football and pretty this and etc. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I want to win. I want to. I want to watch it. Winning football, I don't yeah. care. I don't care if they wear fancy shirts or whatever. They just got to win, uh, and one nil, one nil is the, the the result that I I, I crave for. We get yeah. twenty one nils a year. I'm a happy happening. Absolutely, yeah. It's a results business. And Stephen, I guess have you played in teams? I know obviously you played in a team like that with us, but have you also played in teams that have been asked to play it from the keeper and? Tippy tappy around the edge of the box, and you know all, all this modern game now that everyone's trying to do. You know, it's surely all about winning, isn't it? That's the main thing. Yeah, I think I think football's kind of a bit crazy at the moment. Obviously, I think Pep's had a big influence on that as well yeah. uh, with the City teams and Barcelona teams. But uh, like you say, I think for a fan, I think I think winning's the most important thing. I, I, yeah. know, I know it gets to a stage where they're paying for the tickets and. Some some fans want to see attractive football, but if you if you have to weigh it both up, do you want attractive football that loses, or do you want just winning football? Exactly. And I think that's down to it at the end of the day. And I also think it it, it depends on the group of players you have. Yeah, hundred percent. You can't go in and ask players that aren't capable of playing out from the back to do it because you're just going to shift. Yeah. So, I think there's a lot of considerations to take into it. Like I said, I think football has gone gone a bit crazy over the last kind of five, six years. It's all playing out from the black back to playing through lines. If you kick it long, it's it's hoof ball. But at the end of the day, I think it's a results business which everyone's judged on. So you've got to find a balance, I think. Yeah, mind you saying that, you was obviously there when, when Zola came in, weren't you? And yeah. I guess massive difference in training and on a match day, wasn't it, to what it was under Gary? Not, not just... Um, you know, uh, off the field, but on it as well, I guess, as well, wasn't it? Trying to play a different way completely. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, the way Gianfranco wanted to play football is the way I, I like. I, I love playing football on the on the floor. Like I say, if it got if it's in the air, sixty percent of the game, I, I'm not happy with that. But it was winning football for us. It, yeah. On, it got us results it got us stabilised and as I say it's how he wanted to play we all knew our roles and responsibilities Gianfranco came in and like I say for me excellent but we just couldn't win a game we could not win and it was persisted with and persisted with and I think that's when you kind of have to have if plan A ain't working you've got to have a plan B and like I said I think Gary had that spot on where it's probably the club and that probably didn't like how we played football and it was a strange decision tried to change it up and obviously didn't work and nearly nearly got us relegated so uh, 
like I say, you, you've got to weigh up everything, how the, the group of players you have, the teams you're playing against. And like I say, it can't be just one way all the time, especially if it's not working. No, 100%. Um, Mark Adams, I guess you were fairly pleased when you found out that Gary was coming back as well. Yeah, well, I was, was like I say, it's a bit, of a bit energized. I think. I think the whole fan base pretty energized by that. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm glad. To be honest, Paul, I'm glad Gary Gary did mention that um, some sections might have been a bit hesitant because of the the uh, the verbals and all the rest of it whenever he's come up against us. But that, that's fortune under the bridge now. We've got to all pull together, haven't we? Um, whatever it takes, stay in this league. Whatever it takes. I mean, you know, mm. as long as we stay up, that's the main thing. Whatever's gone on before and all the rest of it, you know. Let's just stay up and, and take it, you know, see what happens in the summer. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, like we've all alluded to, that, you know, we're in, I think we'll be in safe hands. Um, I, I can't see us going down at all. I think this is, I think we will have a bit of a bounce now, to be fair. I Hope think so. it might like first time round after, you know, the, the first game after the Bournemouth, you know, the 0 0 at Wolves. I think yeah. we'll uh, get some decent results and it'll see us over the line, I think. Yeah, all I'm asking for is that we go to that last game against Norwich and we don't, you know, we can enjoy it because we ain't got to worry about staying up on that last day you know it'd be nice to do that wouldn't it yeah I can uh, imagine but I've got, I have got a, yeah I have got a feeling though that it's going to go to the wall you know I just have yeah I just um, <laughs> of all the of all the opponents to play against especially if they're going for a playoff place you know you wouldn't choose them would you but what no. will be will be you know we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens but um, it's going to be an interesting um, end to the season yeah, absolutely. So, Stephen, let's go back to the beginning of your career. Then you obviously started at uh, a certain club up the road in the West Midlands. Um, <laughs> how did that come about then? How, when did you sort of um, realise that you was going to obviously make it as a pro player? I mean, it was three three appearances for Wolves, was it? In 06, 07 season in the league. And that was yeah. when you got your debut for them. And at what point, what, what, what was it like back then? Because you kind of like, obviously, as a youngster then. Was you sort of being scouted or was you was you spotted or how did it come about? Yeah, obviously. So I'm from Dublin, back in Ireland. Uh, I played for a youth team over there, a schoolboy team, Cherry Orchard. Yeah. And kind of around 13, 14, kind of getting trials. So I'd been to Celtic, Wolves, Ipswich. Actually, I've been to Villa on trial as well. Uh, and yeah, kind of, Lee, it's, it's a bit different in Ireland. So it's like junior share so it's like 15 I think it might be A levels over here oh yeah yeah Yeah. so uh, had a decision to make obviously got offered a two year scholarship and a one year pro at Wolves and obviously kind of from about 12 I was kind of done with school I thought I had a chance so everything was into football so I moved over to Wolf, Wolverhampton when I was 15 into their academy uh, into Diggs and yeah, that's kind of how it started. Uh, obviously, playing in the youth team. Uh, had a few loans around 17, 18, and managed to break into the team. I think just as I was 18, it's, a, it's actually a funny thing. I don't know if Robo kind of noticed that my debut for uh, Wolves was in a playoff semi final against West Brom, semi final at the Hawthorns, and I came on right wing against Paul Robinson. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm oh never, yeah. yeah I'm never to tell and tell. <laughs> he absolutely <laughs> smacked me, uh, and I was like, "Welcome to senior football." <laughs> <laughs> he, he left me for. Yeah, my debut for Wolves was uh, in the Black Country Derby against West Brom in the playoff semi-finals. Wow! And then you yeah. had spells at um, Stockport County, Hereford United, and then you, have, you then you move on to MK Dons on loan, and then that then turns into a permanent move doesn't it and you, you're at MK Dons there for a good few seasons yeah uh, I think the year Wolves uh, the year I left Wolves got promoted to the Premiership and Mick McCarthy who was my manager there uh, yep. a lot of time before, uh, he basically said listen even if we were in the Championship you probably wouldn't play now we've gone to the Premiership you definitely won't play so he was basically just said to me, for the best of your career, I think it's probably best you probably move on. And yeah. it's the most honest, brutal, best conversation I've ever had with a manager. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I could have stayed there another year and been a premiership footballer without kicking a ball. So yeah. just that kind of title, but I thought it was kind of time to go out and kind of start kind of making a career for myself. Yeah, uh, yeah. I say yeah. So, uh, I've been on loan to MK Dons and 
although kind of a new club I kind of I liked to set up uh, Roberto Di Matteo was the manager and uh, got on really well with him he wanted to sign me I love Bob Ma- that's Bob Matthews in English is it <laughs> Roberto Di Matteo is Bob Matthews in English isn't it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, yeah he signed me and again another just crazy how football works I signed for him obviously MK Don's manager and a week later he uh, he ups and goes to West Brom he gets a West Brom job so straight away I signed for a manager and a week later he's gone so yeah it's just crazy how f- kind of football works sometimes I was all my I, all, I felt like ringing him and saying could you not have waited a week and just take me to West Brom <laughs> 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 I guess at uh, MK Dons as well you would have played with Dele Alley as well am I right there yeah, Delhi, yeah. So Delhi was kind of as my kind of last year before I moved to Blues, he was in and around the first team squad, uh, just breaking through, but uh, kind of the year before that training with us and then my last season he broke through and yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal talent. Such a shame, isn't it, what's happened to him, you know, um and obviously is, that yeah. we've all seen that interview with Gary Neville, I guess, and it was just so sad when I when I watched that because you know, in the in the eighteen World Cup, and you know the round between sort of two thousand and fifteen and two thousand and eighteen, he was unplayable. He was absolutely incredible, and I remember him getting an unbelievable goal at Crystal Palace for Tottenham. And you know, he was looking like he was going to go and be one of England's greatest ever players at one point, didn't he? And yeah, it's 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 such a shame because he's a lovely, lovely kid. Yeah, like, I, I I still live in Milton Keynes. I still I bump into him now and again. Uh, lovely kid, like I say. I haven't asked him personally what what's going on. It's it's no. his it is obviously life, but definitely something's happened. And like I say, it's a shame because what a talented boy and what a lovely kid as well. Like um, like I said, he had his, had the world at his feet, and uh, something something's not gone. Something's not right there. But hopefully, as I say, even if he doesn't kick another ball, hopefully he he is okay within himself. Yeah, absolutely. Because it primed Dearly Alley now with, with with Jude Bellingham and Declan Rice in that England midfield would be amazing. It would, you know? yeah, it would. And like I say, you look at Jude now. Obviously, what he's doing. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, people around him. I, I think he's got good people around him, Jude as well. So hopefully, his career just stays on the path that's going on. And as I say, he, he he's got the world out of see that kid. Another one of them players that people will be talking about in. 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you know, like the yeah. likes of the way he's going, he will be anyway. Like Maradona, he'll be at that level with like Maradona and Pele and, you know, people like that, won't he? I think Ronaldo yeah. and that, you know. So, but yeah, so then you, you, you play the 2013 14 season at MK Dons and then that summer in 2014, obviously, we come in for you and Lee Clark signs you and you make that move from MK Dons to Blues and tell us how that come about. Uh, yeah, so. Like I said, at MK, we had a decent team. We'd missed out on promotion, I think, three times in the five years I was there, two or three times. Uh, and other than my first year there, every summer I had opportunities to leave, but I got on re- really well with the manager. I believed in the project, and every year I just thought, no, next year will be the year. And it, it just came to the stage where I was 25, and I thought, I thought I was good enough to play in the championship and it, uh, it was just one of them moments where I just had to make a, a hard decision uh, had a couple of teams in for me but the minute kind of Birmingham came in for me obviously the size of the club the history of the club as well it was a no brainer uh, as I say as much as MK wanted me to stay and other teams were kind of trying to sign me the minute Blues came in it was the only place I wanted to go yeah, and you, that summer as well, we signed the likes of obviously yourself and David Cottrell signed that summer as well, did he? Clayton Donaldson, yeah. Clayton Donaldson. Tesh, yeah. Robert Tesh as well, yeah. Robert Tesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was quite a few of us that came in. Obviously, what happened? I think it was the season before when Caddy scored. Yeah. 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 So obviously, a lot of turnover of players in that summer. But yeah, we came in as a massive club. Uh, didn't start great on the league. Uh, uh, kind of I don't after kind of I signed for him I think we just kind of didn't get on and me personally as I say and I didn't play as much on the league and the results weren't great so uh, like I say and then when Gary came in it kind of all changed for me up here mm. yeah you didn't get on with Lee you say Lee Clark not 
not that I didn't get on with him he, he, he was completely fine never had any kind of arguments with him uh, I don't know if he if I wasn't his type of player uh, which I kind of find weird because surely he would have known what type of player I was but like I say coming in everything was yeah you're kind of going to play and that and then I think three or four bad results and then kind of out of the team mm. uh, but like I say it's a manager's decision at the end of the day Uh he, he has to pick the 11 that goes out there I wasn't in kind of the team mm, before mm. he kind of his last few games and then kind of Gary coming in obviously like I say changed kind of my my start but that was basically I feel my start in my blue, uh, Blues career Yeah because a lot of that team that you know that Gary managed to stabilise us under was actually signed by, by Lee wasn't it you know you, there was yeah. obviously your David Davis there was David Cottrell obviously at the early points as well and Clayton Donaldson yeah, you know, so um, and, and obviously Robbo as well, and Paul Cadis, and you know, yeah. they're kind of, but they did sign some good players for us. He did, uh, yeah. They just it didn't for whatever reason it just kind of didn't work. I don't know if kind of the year before played a part in him kind of losing his job, uh, but we didn't have a great start to the season. Uh, so um, I, was I surprised? Probably not. I wasn't kind of surprised that kind of Lee lost his job. No, not at all. But then when Gary comes in, as you say, you know, it just all changes, doesn't it? And we we, 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 we draw that first game under Gary, nil nil at Wolves. And then there's that night, that really special night, actually, against Watford at home where we beat them. I think it was 2 0, was it? Or 2 1, 3 1? I can't remember. 2 1, I think. Two one, two one, yeah. Two one, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Clayton got them both, didn't they? Yeah, I think yeah. he did, yeah. But yeah. Like, I think touching on Gary coming in, I think off air we talked about the game before he came in before the Wolves game and we lost at home to Bournemouth I think it was 8-0 yeah. Yeah. which was obviously a disastrous day uh, one of my worst days in football but for Gary to come in after that and go to Wolves who were, were doing really well that season and getting nil nil up there I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was on Sky as well a lot of yeah, pressure it was. Yeah. On the team. Yeah, and him coming in uh, but like I say I remember that week after it, it was just basically, can we be solid? Can we go there and can we keep a clean sheet? Uh, rightly or wrongly, he didn't care if we scored a goal. Yeah, He just he just wanted to get a reaction out of players and he wanted a, a clean sheet up out there and we managed to get it. And I'm pretty sure Wolves were a much better team than us that day, but we, we stuck in and uh, we fought hard and we got a point and it, it, was a, it was a start that we needed, especially after losing 8-0 with a manager coming in as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Any? Uh, yeah, sorry, Paul. Oh, no, I was going to say. Sorry, Steve. I was going to say after that eight nil. Going back to the eight nil. What was it like in the dressing room afterwards? Was it like deathly silent? Was people, you know, in each other's faces? What was it like? Uh, yeah, the, there was a few. Uh, sorry, yeah. sorry, my passion was about to go. Don't That's don't what... go. I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, there wasn't. I know when the sending off happened, uh, there was, I think it was Wes Thomas that uh, got sent off. And, oh, one sec. Yeah, Wes Thomas got sent off. And uh, I think him and David Edgar might have had a bit of bit of a scuffle after that. But after the game, no, it was just, I think, embarrassment. Uh, mm. Yeah, a bit of shock, disbelief. Uh mm. Yeah, it was just crazy. I, I don't think any team ever thinks they're going to lose 8 0, and especially in the championship as well. It was just, yeah, it was just really, really quiet. Really, yeah. really quiet after the game, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any early questions coming in for Stephen, Chris? Uh, it was David Ed that got sent off, says Tom Richardson. Uh, how will Gary set okay. up the team for the next game? Nigel Mansell Man wants to know. Uh, what do we think? Is that me? Oh. Yeah. yeah, is that for all of them? Yeah, go on, Steve. Yeah, yeah I, I, like I said, I touched on, I think he'll, he'll get them defensively really sound. Uh, I don't know what kind of formations the club have been playing this season, but I think he'll go to a back four. Uh, he'll probably shore up the midfield as well. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a kind of 4 2 3 1 or 4 3 3 formation. Uh, it's mainly what we played when we were there but again it depends on what he sees in the group what's the best formation for him and the best for the team going forward mm. 
I can see one from Lillipad, actually. Uh, did you play any practical jokes on any of your teammates at, uh, at Blues? Uh, if so, who and why? <laughs> Uh, it was actually it was a great dressing room we had amazing dressing room uh, yeah there was always practical jokes going on uh, if, it, if it wasn't like the masseurs or the physios or whatever it'd be on the players uh, Cots was quite lively Cots was quite lively in the change room uh, so you'd always try to kind of get him when he wasn't kind of watching it out but uh, yeah, Cots was really lively in the change room, so he'd be definitely one you'd be trying to kind of play pranks on and that. So, but it was a great dressing room, amazing dressing room we had, and I think that's the main thing. I think that helped us, especially under Gary, was the kind of team spirit we had. Yeah, uh, it was an amazing group of players, all kind of pulling in the one direction, and uh, yeah, I think that's what kind of probably got us majority of the results was just that fight we had for each other. Yeah, yeah. When we had Paul Caddis on, he told us a story about when he put a load of bubble bath in the bath and it all like spilt over the top and went all over the floor. <laughs> yeah, so, Caddy, uh, and, uh, you always had to watch out for Caddy as well. He always like kind of playing tricks and that. But another kind of great lad as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, Daniel, Daniel said, I, I seen Gleason at Moors and I couldn't understand why a great player like him was, was doing at the Moors. Um, mm. That's a nice compliment. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, like I say, kind of after Blues, kind of kind of uh, went to Ipswich and uh, then headed up north to Aberdeen and had a terror, like, hey, really, I was away from my family, kind of didn't like it up there. And I'd say for two or, two or three years, really fell out of love with football. Uh, uh, and I knew, obviously, COVID had kicked off as well. So I was coming back down from Scotland with no club uh, I knew Richard Beale who was a, a coach at, at Birmingham when I was there he he was involved with Solly Hull and literally just asked could I go into train uh, went in and trained obviously COVID got bigger and bigger and kind of the leagues were coming back and yeah he just said do you fancy it and I said yeah we'll give it a go and yeah that's kind of how this Solly Hall thing came about mm. Mm. Well, that's good um so I'm, I'm obviously conscious of time. We've, we've, we're just doing an hour tonight, aren't we? So uh, we've asked you, Stephen, to pick your one to eleven, haven't we, from the players that you played with at Blues? Um, so what formation are you going? I'm going to go four three three. Uh, like I mentioned to you before, there's going to be a few. There's going to be probably three controversial ones, but I've based it on. I've gone for an eleven that I I've played more with. Then obviously, as I say, there'll be one that stands out that I'm probably going to leave out but it's just because I played with a, a player more for Birmingham than this player but like I say yeah. like amazing talents and it, it, like you said we, we had a chat before it is very tough when you're trying to write down the, the players you've played with and try not leave people out but you, you've you just got to do it yeah go for it then tell us uh, who's, who's in next to start so this again another this was one of my tough ones obviously Darren Randolph and Thomas Cusack two unbelievable keepers yeah obviously Daz I played with at Ireland as well phenomenal phenomenal keeper but I've gone for Thomas just because again I played with him more at Birmingham yeah uh, absolute head case but what, a guy. <laughs> what an unbelievable guy and obviously the career he's had as well uh, and I think he was really good for us as well when he came in especially after losing Daz as well when he left yeah uh, Coming in like that was was really good and yeah so I've gone for Thomas just over over Darren. Yeah, that's close, isn't it? That's debatable. That is very. Debatable. It is. Like they, yeah. Obviously, Thomas kind of coming to the end of his career and and Darren kind of in the middle of his career. It, it is tough. Obviously, Daz is an unbelievable keeper. He's he's gone on and done great things for like West Ham and that and obviously Ireland as well but like uh, what just picked it was just Thomas obviously I played more for Birmingham with him but two amazing keepers yeah let's go right back next I think yeah there's only there's only going to be uh, one that's uh, Caddy yeah 100% yeah, yeah. Centre -back. what's that Sorry. centre back uh, another controversial one I'm going to go for Morrow and Shots Oh, okay. Mm. And again, oh, really, an, another an amazing teammate, Robo. I've I feel so bad leaving him out, 
but it's literally just based on I played with them two more. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, we'll let him know. <laughs> oh, no, I'm I'm just, just going to to let him know. He's, he's, he's watching, he's watching. <laughs> so he already knows. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not. laughs> no, but Robbo, what an amazing, amazing pro to have around. Even me coming into a club, to have that kind of experience there, especially when the, the times are tough as well. To have someone like that in and around dressing room was amazing. And every time he he was called upon from any manager that played that he played for, the the performances he gave were, were amazing and he's had an unbelievable career. But literally just gone for them too, because I think I played more with them too. But yeah, Robbo was a tough one to lose though. Had more with Shotton, did you, than Robbo for Blues? Yeah, you, yeah. yeah, I think yeah, I think I played more games with Shots and Morrow than either Robbo and Morrow or Robbo and Shots. So yeah, like I just, just on that alone, that's the only reason. But like I say, what what a, a man to have in the dressing room as well. Like unbelievable guy. Great to see him doing well with his coaching and uh, and back around Blues as well. Because having that experience around uh, the club will only be beneficial. Yeah, hundred percent. Left back. Uh, there's only really one again that I can kind of go for it's only kind of groundsy uh, he never really had kind of any competition there uh, or I think Royce Wiggins came in once but he suffered a nasty injury but majority oh, yeah. I played that uh, Birmingham were with groundsy and again such a reliable player as I say probably not everyone's cup of tea but he was 100% gave it 100% for the club and like I say, in my time there, he was the best left back I played. Yeah, he was under. I thought he was underrated a bit. You know, he was consistent. Um, he was. He was very. I, I. I thought he was very consistent. Like I say, didn't miss many games. Picture the scene: all of your mates around. You've got your McNugget share boxes ready to go. Partner this with your team playing champagne football. Perfect. Order mug delivery now on the McDonald's app. There's nothing quite like a McDelivery. At participating restaurants, 18 plus, serving times, delivery fee and terms apply. See mcdonalds.com. I think most managers that came in, played them, uh, trained well. Like I say, it's not that there wasn't other left backs about. It was just that he had the trust of the managers that were putting him in there. So very, very, very solid player. And uh, as I say, I thought he, he was really good for us. Yeah, I yeah. never, I never understood the stick he got. You know, no, so yeah. Dixie, he didn't do much wrong for us. I don't get it. No, no I, I think that's just, I think that's just football fans nowadays, isn't it? Like, mm. especially with the social media and that, like, you're not going to please everyone. As I say, mm. once, once you know you're you're doing your job to the best of your ability, and the manager has trust in you, I think you've kind of got to put all that to the side. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That 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 game when Rick, uh, Royce Wiggins got injured, that was the one when um, David Davies scored, wasn't it, against Villa and got took against his shirt Villa. off the whole of St Andrews. Yeah, it was me chasing. Yeah, go on, sorry. Yeah, it was me chasing him when he was going towards like, Villa fans. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember you chasing. Him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you not running after him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good there, but yeah, terrible, terrible injury Royce got that day. I don't think he's played since. No, it's uh, terrible. Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't good. As I say. And like I said, that's probably the only competition Groundsy kind of had. And it, it would have been interesting to see if Royce kind of stayed fit. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What would have happened or if it would have kind of elevated Groundsy to push on again. And But like I say, yeah, probably the only one that I can remember that kind of pushed Groundsy a little bit first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go into midfield now then. So we're doing, what we're we doing, sorry, 4 3 3, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to go. For two holding midfielders in David Davis and Keith and Belt, Keith, uh, two unbelievable people to start off with, and uh, two great players to play with as well. Especially as I'd say that's not the side of the game I like really well. Getting like about the pitch, stuck in, getting a foot in, they were amazing for that. Uh, to play alongside either of them in the midfield was a uh, was really good so yeah I'm going to stick uh, them two in there exactly what we need now as well in the team um, yeah. you know for these head but uh, but yeah no two good two good holding midfielders there and let's start on the left then so you're going to three behind the striker yeah so yes. I'll go just in front of them two just at the number 10 position I'm going to go John Terrell yeah he was quality wasn't he that season on loan John Terrell was amazing uh, yeah. 
like I say, that that season he came in, he yeah. was he was unplayable at times. Uh, such a gifted footballer, easy on the eye. He could do he could do things you could only dream of with a football. So, uh, yeah, he was amazing. He was a special special player. Yeah, and then on should we go left next? Yeah, we'll go left. Another tough one. I've put this player in just to get him in the team. If I'm honest, <laughs> uh, again, I want Jack Jacks Magoma, another amazing, amazing player. Uh, I just felt I had to get Shea Adams in. Yeah, and I go Shea Adams on the left. Okay, he uh, played, played there a couple of times, didn't he? He did, yeah. Like I say, he, he was asked to do a job out there sometimes, and he, he did amazing for us. Uh, he was just one of them players when when Gary brought him in. You thought it's, he's gonna go far. Mm. Uh, when I first saw him, he had everything. He had power, pace, strength, left foot, right foot. He could head the ball. Uh, like I say, when he first came in, I thought he's he'll play in the Premiership. Yeah, 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 definitely. He, he, he was good, and uh, yeah. he was amazing for us. So I've gone with Shay over Mags. Just okay. Yeah, yeah. And then this this must have been a headache. Um, and then yeah. on the right again, this was the this was the toughest one by far because I know for a fact everyone be like, "How have you not put Dimmy in your team?" And what <laughs> what a player uh, Damari was. Uh, but I've gone with Cots. Just do you think he, yeah. Do you think he's exceeded expect? Oh, sorry. Do you think he's lived up to expectations, Damari Gray, in his career since he left us? Because I was I was expecting him to go on and, and be a, like yeah. a really good regular Premier League player, but it never oh, quite did. happened, did it? Really? No. no again, another like uh, like I say, I don't, I don't, I don't speak to him. I, I think the last time I spoke to him, I think he played Leicester. I think it was. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a decent. Yeah. Effort. He had a decent spell at Everton for a bit. Yeah, yeah. He was definitely one. He he was he was game, like he had game changing pace. Like his his pace was a joke. His dribbles. Yeah. Like I say, yeah, maybe you probably think yeah he could have did more, but he's he's, yeah. he's done amazing things. But him and Cots was tough. Like I say, the Mary was an exceptional talent. But I've just gone for Cots just because, like I say. Played with him a lot more at Birmingham, and like I said, yeah. I think Cox was was really, really good for Birmingham the time I was there. Yeah, good set piece take, a good free kick take. Had a great right, right peg on him, didn't he? Yeah, um, yeah his, his, his walk rate was so undervalued. Like his walk rate for the team was amazing. Yeah, because he, he had a lot of problems going on at the time off the field as well. Of you know, which has been well documented as well. So you know, to turn up on a Saturday afternoon and perform the way he did. You know, if he had a lot going on off the field, then fair yeah. play to him. Well, you know, yeah, definitely. Like I say, he's he's had kind of issues away from football and that, and but uh, no, he was good to have it around the change room. He was always a laugh and that, and yeah, the issues he had from football it never kind of affected his performances. And so, no, I've just gone for cuts over Dimmy just on the right, just like I say, just. Because I've played with him more, and yeah, and I, I, I think he, he performed really well for Birmingham out there. And then up front, again another tough one. It was between I could have t- stuck Shea up there on his own, but I, I thought Clayton has to go up there, and it was tough between him and Juki. Yeah, yeah, it was really tough between them two, but I've decided to go for Clayton. Uh, yeah. Well, I think as a lone striker, Clayton was definitely better as a lone striker. Juki's better with someone in there, you know, in like mm. a four four two. Yeah, hundred percent. Like you say, if you play at four four two, the two of them up top or Juki and Shea up top. But I think because I've gone four two three, I think I just went for Clayton's uh, amazing, amazing player. Uh, Run his heart out for us, didn't he? Absolutely. And the way, obviously, we were quite an counter attacking team on the Gary, sitting in deep, hitting hitting teams on the break with pace and like say you could clear a ball up to Clayton and it'd be 70 70 30 in their favour and he, he'd, he'd get something from it get something he from was, it yeah he was a willing runner uh, team player uh, and I think he just fitted Gary's system absolutely perfect yeah um, yeah I, I, I loved playing with Clayton like I say you could you could put the ball in the channel and 
like I say, nine nine times out of ten strikers wouldn't get there, but Clayton would make something out of it and make you look half decent. But yeah, like I say, another another great lad as well. So uh, I've just gone for Clayton. Yeah, yeah, and captain and manager. Uh, I think no surprise. Manager is Gianfranco's. No, I'm only joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you yeah, have yeah. just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I just got the beat. No, uh, yeah, manager is obviously Gary Rowett, and captaincy obviously captain. The most times I played with him was Morrow. Morrow, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. a really good cool that is. Yeah, thanks for thanks for doing that. So, uh, Alan, I'll come on to you next. You got anything you want to ask Stephen yourself? Uh, yeah, in in my in my search for your goals for us, which I I couldn't find because I probably spelt your name wrong. I spelled it with a V. Yeah, um, it's, it's got a, a wonder goal for against Mexico for Ireland. Yeah, oh, nice. who who was the manager of that team? Uh, so Martin O'Neill was the manager, uh, and Roy Kane was assistant. Right. Well, you you. you, you <laughs> As, as, as a Birmingham City player getting picked by Martin O'Neill, you ought to have a special medal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> special medal made for you for that. So, well well done for that. Yeah, that was I, – I, I watched – I had not seen that before. Um, what, a, what, a, what an absolute cracker. Unfortunately, you, you lost 3-1, did you? Yeah, we did lose, but like I say was – Was that in the Aztec Stadium? It was, yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the World Cup might be getting held there in America – yeah, that, that the World Cup final might be getting held there. Yeah, so it's something I can say I've scored in a World Cup final stadium. <laughs> uh, uh, um, someone's asking here. Sorry, it was uh, I've lost it off my screen. Oh yeah, Rob, Rob, Robert Robbins is asking, what's the best atmosphere you've experienced as a Blue when you played for us? What was the best atmosphere you played in? Uh, obviously, the kind of derbies at home were amazing. The Wolves. We I think we played West Brom in the cup one year. Obviously yeah. the. Villa game was something that I'll never ever forget but I yeah. love I absolutely love the away games with Birmingham yeah. it's just it's something special about that away crowd it's just amazing yeah. so I touched on it we had some amazing games at Fulham and I, I don't know what it is about Fulham but the away support at Fulham is always unbelievable it's, it's yeah. unbelievable everywhere you go but something always sticks out to me just at Fulham I don't know what it is if if they make a day of it and go down to London for the day, get on the yeah. piss for the day or what it is, but it's <laughs> yeah. unreal atmosphere down there. But uh, yeah, it'd be the home games against obviously the Villa, West Brom in the Cup, Wolves, and uh, every every away travel was always special. Yeah, yeah. It's also 52 years today since our, our club crest was created as well by a gentleman Bruce. called Mark Wood. Oh, the, well, that's uh, okay. Entered a competition, didn't he? In 1972, Alan. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He entered a competition, didn't he? And he, he won it, didn't he? And that was his. Uh, he, he created the best badge in football. It's got to be. <laughs> got to be the best badge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I know. I'm a bit of a traditionalist, and I, I, I mourn. I mourn the the loss of the uh, city uh, emblem, but uh, it, it's so. Uh, over the 52 years, it's it's grown on me, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, I'm going to come on to you next, Craig. For So what we do now, Stephen, before we come on to the who as well, you know when we make subs at St Andrews and all the fans go, ooh? Yeah. yeah. We have we have a we have a little um, section of the show called that. Actually, Chris, have you got that ready now? I've got it ready. Yeah, yeah, actually. So what, we're gonna yeah. Do now, what we're going to do now, uh, Stephen, is we're going to play a player that you've played with, Talkie, and we want you to tell us, ooh, it is. Yeah, as simple as that. Here we go. Hopefully. Not just me, obviously. The team was brilliant today, and um, even when we went down to 10, I thought everyone dug in for the last 10 minutes. It felt longer, but no, nah, team performance, obviously, I'm not going to take just credit for it, but obviously, I'm delighted as well. So, yeah. Absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, want, want, want it again? It's about it again. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Come in. Not just me, obviously. The team was brilliant today, and. Um, even went down to 10, I thought everyone dug in for the last 10 minutes. It felt longer, but no, nah, team performance. Obviously, I'm not going to take just credit for it, but obviously, I'm delighted as well. So, yeah. Not easy. He only, he only played a handful of games on loan, and he, he did score for us in the one game. Position? Centre half. Uh, if anybody on the shout box got an idea. Yeah, please, anyone, uh, anyone got any? 
Can I show you what? Have you ever got any idea? Because it's, uh, it's, not, it's not an easy not one. I, I don't make them easy. I could easily no. have played like Matt Buck. You could know you'd have got that in like four yeah, seconds. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, the only two I can think of is either Rob Kiernan or Arl Jenkinson. You don't need to say any more, mate. That it's first name you said is Butter. Was it Rob Kiernan, yeah? yeah. It was indeed, yeah. yeah well done. Yeah. Yeah. It did sound a bit like him, yeah. Well, yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had—I don't know if Robbo's still watching, but we had him going for ages on here with Wes Thomas. Honestly, he <laughs> couldn't <laughs> tell him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've done pretty well there, mate. Um, who did we have for Morrow now? Can you remember? I think he got it as well straight away, more or less. I can't remember. Nah. Was it? It wasn't Grounds, was it? I can't remember. No, no, no. It would have been somebody harder than that. Oh no, it was um, Conor Mahoney, weren't it? Conor Mahoney, Mahoney yeah. yeah. Big That's it. Yeah, Stephen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so Craig. We got Craig's quick fire questions, so uh, a few quick fire questions for you, mate, from Craig. Yeah. Unless, yeah, you so... any... Unless you've got any other questions you want to ask yourself first, obviously. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, on, Craig. I was going to say so. Uh, right, so uh, a few of the the normal ones, but I'm gonna, I've chosen a few of the different ones. So, uh, firstly, uh, did you have to perform an initiation song when you joined the Blues? And if so, what was it? Yeah, it was. Stand by me, the song. Oh, I don't know who sings it, and it was oh, Benny it King. Was, yeah, and it was in Ireland on pre-season training under Lee Clark. So yeah, up in front of the whole squad, uh, fake Mike out, and yeah, 30, 35, 40 seconds of singing that song in front of everyone, which was <laughs> more terrifying than playing in front of St Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was your best and worst subject in school? Obviously, best was probably PE, and my worst was between maths and geography. Um, if you was a boxer or a darts player, what would be your walk on tune? Oh. oh, good one that is, isn't it? it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it'd be Zombie by the Cranberries. Oh, that's a good shout. That's a shout. That is. Yeah. 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 That's a great track. That's yeah. a great song, that is. Yeah, look that. Yeah, it is. Can somebody, you can somebody explain that to me? No. Go on, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I said, can somebody explain that to me? It's just a good track, Alan. You, you, it's a song by the boy. Yeah. Yeah. By who? Cranberries. The cr- Cranberries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Trust uh, me. Have yeah. a listen to it. It's good. It's good. Have a listen have to it, Al. I will. Put, put, put your gramophone on, wind it up, and have a listen. <laughs> 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 uh, if, you, if you weren't a footballer what would you have been oh my god uh, I don't know uh, I'd like to think I'd be involved in sports somehow I don't know if PE teacher or coaching or something like I say wasn't very good at school uh, left school quite early not a lot of qualifications so I'd like to think it'd be something along the lines of PE teacher or coaching and sports so you, you, nobody, did, you didn't, leave, you didn't leave so you didn't leave school thinking you were going to do something you, you hadn't got something in mind when you left school then no I left like I say I left school at 15 yeah. uh, which I think maybe over here it's just after your A levels yeah uh, that you can go on to sixth form or whatever back there it's like you do your junior cert and then you aim for leaving cert mm. I did my junior cert failed uh, but I knew I was coming over to Wolves uh, with kind of a two year scholarship and oh, so, year. Yeah. No, no, nobody will answer that question ever better than Peter Crouch did yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, said, he said, I'm going to be a jockey. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Craig, sorry. Um, last two. Um, in terms of footballing, you've mentioned, obviously, some of your sporting heroes, but who's your sporting hero outside of football? Oh, that is a tough one. Mm. Mm. Oh, I've got me on this one. You follow any other sports? No, literally. Just, uh, <laughs> football, football, football. Uh, yeah. Sporting hero outside football. So you, you went into boxing or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'd watch it, but I'm just trying to think back then. Yeah. I think I was just fully focused on... On football. What about, oh, do you want about golf? Like golf, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I played golf and that, but are, are we talking now or back then? Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime. Uh, yeah, obviously you look at kind of the likes of Rory McIlroy and that Podrick Harrington obviously being from that side in the golf was uh, yeah Barry McGuigan as well the boxer I used to yeah, watch his yeah, fights yeah. when I was younger as well so 
Yeah, probably some of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, finally. I think, well, uh, I think I don't know if he's obviously big boxing fans, but I think Katie Taylor, the women's boxer yeah, out of yeah, Ireland, is such, such an inspiration. Mm. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, obviously, you've got the likes of Conor McGregor as well back there doing good for the UFC and that. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's so many that are doing so well and representing our country so well at the moment. But, uh, yeah, it'd be something out of there. Mm. And then finally, it's the last minute and there's a penalty. It's for your life. Who's going to take it? Oh, anyone. Um, anyone. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm team Ronaldo, so I'll probably... I'll probably let Ronaldo take it. Good job sure. I didn't ask the Messi and Ronaldo question then, any Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've answered both of them there. So yeah, I'm team Ronaldo. Who's a, three, three, three quick questions from me. Who's the best player you played with at Blues? Um, and who's the best player you played with at Ireland? And who's the best player you've ever played against? Uh, so, Blues, best player I played with. Uh, Tough one. Uh, just off the top, man, probably the one that springs to mind, probably John. John Terrell. Yeah, that season he was pretty good, wasn't he? Yeah, that season he came in, he was amazing. Like I say, I'm probably been put on the spot here a little bit, but he's the one that springs to mind. Yeah. Uh, the most. Uh, for Ireland, probably, yeah, it'd probably be Robbie Keane. Yeah. Yeah, Robbie mm-hmm. Keane, yeah. So, yeah, yeah he, he was an amazing, amazing footballer, amazing finisher. Yeah one of the all-time kind of greats, especially coming from their country. But uh, against, I was fortunate enough to play against uh, Stephen Gerrard, so it'll be, it'd probably have to be him. Yeah, wow. he, he was just class, wasn't he? He was, talk about levels of football, like that's just different, different levels. Like the players. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, Lily Pad asked earlier, what is your pre, what was your, pre, or what is your pre-match meal? It's it's changed over the years, uh, but it always kind of has eggs in it somehow. So <laughs> it'd be either scrambled egg on toast, or I might have an omelette on toast, or it's something along them lines. But it, it changes kind of just kind of what I fancy on the day. So when you're eating that about one pm for a three pm kickoff, something like that, or no, is it no, we'd be eating that about eleven half eleven. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, and then kind of when you're getting to the ground, one half one, then you're talking energy bars and your Jaffa cakes, your bananas, oranges, and all that. But your pre-match is earlyish. It's kind of like a late breakfast. Yeah, it's a bit okay. like us before we came on here, isn't it? Really, it's what we... yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the Jaffa yeah, cakes definitely. We have Cadbury cream eggs. Chocolate milk. Me. <laughs> Mark, have you got me on player cam? I actually did have a cream egg before I came on the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, any other questions, Chris, for for Stephen? Uh, I'm just going back. Uh, Michael Woods wants to know: Is there a time limit on quick fire questions? Um, <laughs> 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 I'm not going to ask him that one. Uh, who did you Who did you enjoy tackling the most? Said Robert Robbins. In training or in games. <sighs> Let's do both. Let's do both. Yeah. Uh, in training, I always used to enjoy tackling. I think it was is it Diego Fabrini? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, because he was so skillful, and I could never get near him. And the times I did get near him, I, I really enjoyed tackling as well. So he was he was one I always kind of liked to be a bit hard with in, in the tackle. Uh, in games, kind of I don't know. I think when we played Villa, it was anyone. <laughs> anyone. <laughs> right answer. Yeah. So, yeah, the game in the game's kind of tough. There's not one I can kind of pin down. But uh, yeah, Diego in uh, in training, my God, it was it was hard to get the ball off him. He, he needed his own ball, so it was always nice to kind of leave one in on him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was the most? Who was the funniest and most intelligent player of players at Blues? Uh, funniest like I said it was a good dressing room really really good dressing room I think Digger Digger had a really good personality uh, always never never in a bad mood like I said I was, I was probably four out of five days in a bad mood so uh, having people like that Digger was was great around the dress, dressing room uh, Cots was good like I say Morrow shots yeah just good lads I got on really well with Caddy Caddy was funny yeah uh, he, even even Thomas, like Polish, big Polish, six foot, whatever, 
he, he had his days as well where he, he was absolutely hilarious so no we had honestly I cannot tell you we had an amazing dressing room on the Gary yeah really good dressing room and uh, most intelligent oh. um, I'm going to say probably Morrow yeah yeah well, I love yeah. Well, he used to dress smart, so that's all I'm going on. <laughs> <laughs> he used to, so, like I say, he, he could be tick as two planks, I don't know, but he, he dressed smart. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be chuffed at that. Duke, he's got a bit on the guitar as well, isn't he? I've seen a clip of Duke playing the guitar. Yeah, he, uh-huh. he's amazing on oh, the yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. It was weird because we, we didn't kind of find out to kind of late, I think he'd been at the club probably 18 months before we actually knew. And uh, he did it on one pre-season tour, and yeah, he was amazing, unbelievable, brilliant. Great. Yeah, Alan, back to you, mate. Any, any more you want to ask? Can I think? Uh, we, can I just say we've only, we've, we've only got a couple of minutes, so and we've got a couple of we've got two two games for uh, predictions, haven't we? Before we oh, okay. before we yeah, before yeah. we come back, but also I need to uh, a massive shout out to all the new uh, uh, existing and coming up o- OSCs as well. Um, the, the supporters groups and that was just absolutely loads now isn't it Craig there is so we've got you know firstly um, everybody now it is, it is live so for those that follow the club across all the social media streams uh, and also be coming up on your emails but we are now live with the Birmingham City official supporters clubs mm-hmm. they are spread across the world um, so we've got Groups over in Australia, America, Nigeria, Korea. Saudi Arabia. We've got Spain. We've got the Canaries. You, you know, we really are across the world. Well, and Washington. we're currently sitting at 41. So there's already an increase since we last discussed these. Um, it's dead easy. Dead easy to sign up. Doesn't cost anything either for the, uh, the first part of the, the setup. And you'll see lots of, of benefits that go through for both um, members and also the branches. Nice and simple. On the club's website and across their socials, you will see the announcement. And as part of that, there is a really straightforward click here link. All you have to do is register your details. So it's your name, it's your address, it's your date of birth, and it's also your contact details. It's purely kept for uh, the, the club's purposes uh, and ourselves so that we can see who it is that's registered with us. And also as groups, as we become more mature, we will have get-togethers and there will be fundraising and various different things going on. In fact, you'll see some people are already signed up to run the 10K in Birmingham. So, you know, watch out for a few more things. Um, but, you know, dead easy five minutes that's all it takes go in Fantastic. sign yourselves up and let's let's get this moving because it's a really exciting time and this is the beginning of a massive journey for everybody involved huge shout out to the uh, OSC HQ um, they have been fundamental in setting this up uh, and I know there's been a hell of a lot of work and telephone calls going on between the club and them so suck and poor delves huge kudos and, and and you know thanks a lot for all of your work but that also is is for the all the others that are involved as well so yeah any problems with signing up reach out to myself uh, and we'll uh, see what we can do to get that sorted but get get signing up and let's get these numbers up and uh, let's look forward to some some great stuff on the OS soon excellent mm. uh, so, um, so in, in this order then uh, QPR and Preston coming up I'll leave it with you Craig go on well, you know, I think we're going to see a bounce um, on, on, on the Gary and... We've gone underwater. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> gone underwater. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a... He's sinking. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going. Oh, yeah. um, back. I'm back and back. So <laughs> I think we'll see um, a draw, and I'll go for one all mm-hmm. on Friday. And then I think we'll beat Preston on, on Monday. Um, I just feel as though that's that positivity will be uh, spreading into oh, so to so all so the players so so we're so already so. seeing it from all of the clips and everything else and, and put it this way I don't think I'll be going into the dressing room and, and not listening to people because I just get the feeling there'll be some rockets up people's backsides and we've got nobody better than Robbo in that changing room for doing that so yeah draw on Friday positive 2-0 
I'll go for uh, against Preston. Go on, Alan. one-all fighter. Alan? Uh, I him up. Now, now, now that Gary's come in, um, I, anything's possible. So, so I'm, I'm going to go uh, our usual 1-0 at QPR. And the Preston, the Preston one, um, I think, will be the tougher of the two. Mm. Uh, and But I, 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 I fancy us to nick it. Uh, but that, if 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 there's going to be one of them drawn, that'll be it. Mark, I'm going to say uh, one one on Friday. I think we'll get good points on Friday, and I think we'll scrape it two uh, one against Preston. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you reckon, Paul? I reckon we'll draw nil nil at QPR, just like Rowie's first game, first time he came. I reckon we'll do it again nil nil, um, and then I reckon we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll win two one against uh, against Preston at home. Mm-hmm. David, what do you reckon, mate? And if you come to the game on Monday, if you come to the game on Monday next week as well, you can watch UB40 after. If you didn't know that, yeah, yeah. you might be forced to. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon, mate? We got PR away Friday, and then we got pressing at home on both holiday Monday. That's me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go on, Stephen. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna go. I think in a, a tough one nil win away at QPR. And I think, uh, like said before, I think the Preston one is, is going to be tougher. Uh, I think four points out of two games. I think beat QPR away, 1-0, and I think it'd be 1-1 on the Monday. Mm. Mm. That'll do, though. Four points out of the next six won't be bad at all, will it? It'd be a good start for Gary and get us sort of hopefully pull us away a bit. Well, it will, won't it? Because we'll beat QPR, wouldn't we? So. Be excellent. Mm. Yeah. Oh, there, you okay. go, then. there we go, then, Paul. Got the final whistle. Let's wrap it up. Okay, That's so nice. we've been the Tilton Talk Show, sponsored by Small Affordable Cars. I've been Paul Hipkiss, and it's good night from me, and it's good night from Chris Brown. And it's good night from me, and it's good night from Alan Watton. And it's a good night from me, and a good night from Mr. Fixer Craig. And it's a good night from me, and uh, oh, do I have to say it, but it's a good night from Road. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good night from me, and it's a good night to our guest, Stephen Gleeson. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got, who you got next, Stephen? Are you playing next? Uh, we're playing oh, a team called Needham Market. They're actually top of the league on Friday, and then we have oh, I forget who we have on the Monday, but we've got we're doing Friday Monday this week. So yeah, yeah it'll be tough two games. Yeah. Good luck in them games. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Oh, Stephen Rogers says you're still miserable. Always, <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs>